Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt, a webcast that explores everything we currently know about the truth about aliens, human history, reality, consciousness, and the role meditation can do to help us understand all these things, and how we might all work together to build the best world possible for all beings, human or non-human alike. Meditation and Aliens is hosted by me, Matt Reddy. I'm an amateur ufologist. I have a degree in philosophy. I'm the creator of HiveOne.net. I'm also an elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. Each week, I am joined by Doro Kiley, longtime meditator, meditation teacher, and an experiencer with many stories, and life coach extraordinaire. You can find more about Doro at her website, creationcoach.com. Now, on to the show. And we're back again. How are you doing, Dora? I'm doing great. Wondering what's on the agenda for today. I've I've got a little something that I want to bring in later on. So, um, yeah, always looking forward to these calls. What you got? Excellent. Well, um, I do have something to share. Um, but let's see. Do we need to check in on the the presidential situation? It oh, seems. Uh, oh, ouch. I mean, um, it seems. Yeah, you talk yeah, what do you about think? It. How much are you paying attention? What do you think is about to happen? Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I do feel like something is going to happen before the uh, before the election. I, I don't even know if we're going to make it to the election. Would, I mean, that that may be I'm just picking up on everybody's paranoia. So I'm not going to put a whole lot of energy into that. But it feels like it. What do you think? Oh, I President Biden is not going to be the candidate. I don't um, think so. Actually, you might as well. Uh, I can kind of share a screen and show you something. It's just fascinating. Oh, yeah. It's new. Yeah. And, uh, this is uh, what's called a prediction market. And uh, it's called Predict It. And there's another one called Poly Market. Um, but what this does is people can place bets on who they believe, for instance, will be the 2024 Democratic presidential nominee. Oh, that's Casey. interesting. Yeah, so you, uh, you like, if you buy that, you can see here, Kamala Harris is now above Joe Biden. I mean, this is people yeah. putting real money down. Um, and it was literally, you can look at this chart, 90 days. It's been Joe Biden, but after that debate, it started mm -hmm. to plummet. And mm -hmm. uh, Kamala Harris skyrocketed up there are other people in the fray there but mm -hmm. the reason um i mean the reason it's it's got to be it almost has to be kamala is because of money uh because there's like 500 million dollars in the campaign coffers for biden and harris and only harris can use that money oh interesting hmm. so it's really it's uh besides the political reality of jumping over first you know, black woman mm. trying to for the be the candidate. It's just financially, it's it's unfeasible. This is an interesting. How is this? Just somebody came up with this website. Is this a government website? What is this? Oh no, it's, there's um, it's a prediction market. Oh, this is another one. This is uh, called Poly Market. This one I can't use in Washington State. It won't let me participate. But the predicted one, I can actually use it. And if I guess things right, I could make some money. Oh, and, and here they also Kamala Harris is above Joe Biden, um, forty-one percent. And it's and they predict all sorts of stuff like presidential election winner. They have Trump at sixty-one percent and Kamala above Joe Biden, still only at sixteen percent. Mm -hmm. RFK down here too. Very wow, nice. Trump is way up there. Holy smokes! Yeah. yeah. This um, is a good, I mean, this is like voting. How come we don't vote this way? I mean, just. Put, put in our five cents, you know, and whoever makes the most money <laughs> wins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is what this, uh, the market over here has for the election winner. Now, one of the cool things, um, I mean, you can literally put anything on here. So they actually have in the poly market, they have something on aliens. Oh, Will the U S confirm that aliens exist in 2024? It's at 8%. <laughs> but... Oh gosh. We got to get the word out. <laughs> <laughs> But I find that bad, you know, it's like, I, I would love to be able to bet on some things like really exotic, but, um, 
let me see anything else uh interesting up here they also you know they have will biden resign during his uh term and that this is, is a really interesting nine percent up to 30 percent now that he's going to resign wow um let me see and then this uh, this is all, you know, that the chance that Harris will be the 47th president, because if he resigns, Kamala becomes president. So or if she wins the presidency as the nominee, she becomes president. So this one has a double, you know, chance and it's shot up to, you know, from 23 percent up to 36. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and on the poly market, they actually show you how much money has been bet on these things. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I see that on the other ones. So like 27 million dollars has been bet on Trump. You know, that's amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. So anyways, um, so that's uh, that's one thing uh, people could check out. Interesting stuff. But yeah, I think only eight percent for the aliens. Now we got to boost that up. We got to get it on the ticket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I think he's going to resign, uh, at least from the nominee within the next week. I think it's going to happen. Really? Yeah, really? the New York Times, everyone's yeah. against. I, the fact that they had the debate so early, I mean, that almost looked weird to me. Is that just made me suspicious? Do you think this was planned? I mean, I think it was, it was basically planned. I, I mean, I think they, you know, were giving it a shot. If he was able to pull off that debate, I think they would have gone with him. But I think I don't know if they intentionally um, helped him fail. Like I have this theory that, you know, that he's been on these, that they can give him drugs to really have him get strong and lucid for like a couple hours at a time. But is it, it you know, I like have, I've been imagining that the CIA, you know, like swapped out his drugs right before the debate to intentionally just like, you know, make it even, you know, make him complete. Oh, God, let's generate some more conspiracies. I mean, who knows? Why not? That could be. Yeah. I, I do mean, remember that's... Trump said we should have him drug tested at that time, that yeah. night. But... I mean, I, I don't believe Biden was in on it. I believe Biden was trying right. his hardest. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. It's like the rest of us, like we're just living in the don't know. You know, it's like, who knows? We don't know. Yeah. Stephen Levine wrote books about that. That's great. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, <laughs> yeah, when it comes to, you know, getting the truth out about aliens and getting the truth out about who's in power in the U.S. and what's really going on and changing our world, I don't trust the Democratic Party at all. Don't trust mm. the Republican Party. I, I believe Biden has been basically a puppet for the secret keepers. May, I mean, but and so it's like, can I have any I'd love to have some hope that Kamala Harris will actually have integrity and be have some strength in office if she gets there. But I just don't trust the Democratic Party. They, they seem completely controlled and corrupt. And yeah, uh, I don't know who to trust anymore. I really, really don't. And then you look at the big picture, the global picture, right? The formation of BRICS and the movement of NATO and it almost looks like, you know, we're getting ready to be surrounded and collapsed. I mean, we just don't know what's going on. I mean, we can think we're getting the best news sources. and Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it feels confusing. Well, there was there have been a couple of really interesting moments. Of, there's interviews with RFK Jr. and interviews with Vivek Ramaswamy. That's his mm -hmm. name. Um, and they were both, you know, they both clearly said, Biden has not been in control of the country. He has not been in charge. And the interviewers asked them both, okay, well, who is? Who right. is actually in charge? And they both didn't give really substantive answers. You know, uh, RFK Jr. will basically say, you know, it's BlackRock and State Street and, um, you know, something like that. But I think he's he also but he also gave a very sort of blase answer. He's like, oh, it's some intern with his feet up on the desk in the Oval Office. And I I feel like he was just sort of deflecting because he knows the answer to that question is very serious. Who is yeah. actually in control? And Vivek Ramaswamy also he kind of he said it was like the bureaucratic state is in charge. And I think, again, he's not 
he wasn't really willing to say, well, I mean, who is really in charge? Because it's like, I think it's, uh, there is like a secret world government in essence. And again, I think it, it traces back to aliens. Of, I mean, I, think it oh, just yeah. really I mean, does. it could go anywhere. I mean, it could be Enki, right? Back from Nibiru, yeah. who's yeah. pulling all the string. Who knows? We don't know. It's a very uncomfortable place to be when things start obviously feeling emotionally intensified, but nobody really knows which way to go. It's like shaking a jar full of ants. <laughs> We're all scattered. It's like, who's who's doing this to us? Yeah, it's weird. Okay. Well, let's, uh, I got an, another thing to share. Yes, sir. All right. And this is related. Um, you know, it's related to who is, who are really the players on earth who are really here. And I recently went to Italy and toured the Vatican. And because, you know, David Grush in his, uh, testimony and in his interviews said that the the Vatican has known about UFOs and aliens since at least 1933 and 1945 when they gave a crashed UFO to the U.S. government secretly. And so that means the Vatican, you know, they've been in the know. They know what's going on, which is, you know, a theory that a lot of us have had. And so I went to the Vatican, took a tour, and he, I shared my screen. Can you see what I, I put up on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I walked by this one room. You, they weren't didn't allow you in it, but you were able to glance in. And I saw this image. And luckily, my wife, Stacy, took a photo of it. And look up on this screen here what you see. Oh, my. This is um, these are angels fighting the fallen angels. And this one. Right here, they caught my attention. Heads. They have animal heads. Look yeah, this guy has an animal head. This one has looks very like a reptilian reptile. head. Reptile. The other one looks like a, a cat, some kind of cat. Or a cow. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here on the left. Oh, and that one's a cow. So these are like human bodies with animal heads, but they also have wings. Look at those. Yeah. Wings. Yeah, but this the, the one that was reptilianish looking. I was like, okay, this is one that really got me fascinated. So I yeah. went on a mission to try to make a better picture of this guy. And so first I flipped it over and to get a better image of him. And I tried to use AI and stuff to help me enhance it. And so I was able to I was able to get a little bit better picture of this head. And then I it took a while, got a close up. And this is AI's oh, oh, one interpretation. Oh. AI, but I I thought this was too different, so I like went back and I, like, I want to really try to say exact to the mm -hmm. thing. So I eventually got this guy created. Did it have a tail on it? Yeah, see, uh, you, it's, it's you don't really notice it, um, but there is this. Oh, there is a tail. <gasps> yeah, it's not. It's kind of subtle. And wow. so yeah, I made sure I put the tail in there, and then uh, I got it enhanced even with more AI. It's uh, incredible. And then so the angels above are fighting the angels below. I've been doing uh, well years ago I did some videos on on this dynamic how it's portrayed in Hinduism. It's it's amazing how the upper forces and the lower forces are constantly you know battling with each other. Yeah. Well, I was, you know, I mean my theory is that reptilian aliens are real and I was like yeah. that looks like the Vatican it has a straight up painting of one. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. after we did all this, uh, I saw this on Twitter and it just reminded me of these guys, these Absolutely. little statues. And I was like, you know what? This guy up here looks a lot like the alien from the painting. Um, it does. So I was just like, uh, wow. Anyways. And this was in Italy at the Vatican. <laughs> so it was in the Vatican. Cute. Yeah. Right there, Mr. Rep upside down Reptilian Alien. Now, again, I mean, he is sort of hidden here with a bunch of other fallen angels that have animal heads. So he could they all have animal heads. Look at them. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What does that represent? I mean, this is like the animal kingdom. Does this represent like the the 3D world that, you know, the physical world that we live in? I, I mean, I believe this is a depiction of the angels fighting the fallen angels. So, you know, the idea of fallen angels come down to earth and right, 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 yeah. decide they want to marry human women and 
What was that one? Look at these weird heads. What yeah. is that? Oh, that's like a dragon. <laughs> yeah, that's very another very demonic ish. Yeah. Well, and he's got these trip. forked, look at these forked feet. Yeah. With claws, and they have they all have tails. Yeah, this is like got the almost like a goat head, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, the Vatican. Anyways, Crazy. thought I would uh, share that. Mm -hmm. Nice trip you had. All right, so let's see. What else shall we go into? Mm. So what's going on with the schools, uh, the classes you're taking? Did you um, tune into that at all? Any headlines, any courses that you're there, Yeah, there's a, a guy named Reed Summers is uh teaching the next course and unfortunately though i i am not caught up on the courses um i missed apparently i was supposed to register for the zoom class and uh so anyways i have three three videos with reed summers that i need to watch mm -hmm. um, and his uh let me see what is his topic of who is he? Just who that's a background. Uh, oh yeah, decoding alien intent. So it's right up my alley. He's basically looking yeah. at what the heck are the alien agendas. Um he is, I believe, a pretty famous ufologist. Let me see if I can find uh Reed Summers ufology. Odds and aliens. Um the agenda behind alien abduction. I'm just seeing um, different uh, podcasts. Well, well, while and you're movies. doing that, I can share what I have been experiencing. I'm just on pins yeah. and needles to share. It. Um, or do you want to finish looking, or what? you no. want me to just jump? No, in? go ahead. Tell me. So, so I'm feeling during meditations or even not just during meditation, just quiet times, you know, sitting out on the deck, looking out um, there, there is, I'm feeling like an influence that is uh, communicating. I don't know a better way. To, this is not by language. Um, and I often do feel things, you know, communications just coming from energy from the woods or whatever surrounding me. But this is a little bit different because it's just, just um, I mean, I took some notes. Do you want me to, to read the notes? Uh, it's about yeah, five minutes. Really... Yeah. I'll yeah, read well, the Well, I'm notes. just like, what? What would, or just one question before you do that. Sure. Have you, in the past, you've have you ever had it feel like some beings were involved with your meditation? Well, you know, I have this sense of my own higher self that I feel is more me. <laughs> um, and so I've always kind of, when I relax into a deep meditative state, I just connect with that deeper, more broad, open-minded part of me, which has a lot more wisdom than I do often when I'm just rushing through my day. Um, so that's that's something that I have access to. But this almost feels like I mean, in some way, everything is connected. So we're all connected in some way, even the largest and most frightening or most loving entities out there. We're all made from the same stuff. But this one is um, is different only, and it's not like it's showing me a shape or a form or giving me an identity. So let me just explain what I wrote down. So it says, this entity doesn't show me any yeah. form of itself. Uh, did you have another question before I continue? No, no, please go ahead. Okay. So my experience of it is very refined and absolutely inconceivable in my view. It's like I can't even begin to understand it. Um, so I just see waves uh, with changing colors and intensities almost like underwater currents uh and all i can and i'm seeing the color aqua greenish blue almost like a teal but it doesn't talk to me in a language it communicates by sharing little flashes of knowing uh and sometimes it feels like a little flash of emotion 
and then an, and then sort of an unknowing a knowing that follows and there's a sense of humor is very disarming extremely lighthearted it's really funny and and uh, and they like the word fun for some reason they want to <laughs> emphasize this they they say it says a lot um so they want us to know that there is a lot that they can share with us in terms of the power of sound and music. Uh, and we are being prepared and invited to communicate. Um, they are helping me understand that a lot of people are understandably spooked and confused or frightened and remember, this is not coming to me in a language. This is coming to me with just, they're telling me in a different way. It's hard to understand. Uh, but people are uh, confused or afraid because there is a lot of other influences here. And I'm not getting a lot of clarity about what that means, that there's other influences here. So of course, people are feeling um, this sense of confusion. Uh, so this, in, this influence is trying to soften the lines of division between what we call solid material world and that which is unseen. So they're, they're just softening it a little bit. Um, and But we first need to understand that all of the answers are not coming from outside of ourselves. There is more permeability, um, more fluidity. In, in the inner and the outer here. So what's happening is that there is a higher energy of consciousness, like going to the next octave in a continuum that we have an opportunity to know. We, we can know things differently if we choose to open that, that relationship. So imagine leaning against, this is an image they gave me, right? So he said, imagine leaning against a window, looking outside, and suddenly you see a reflection of your own eye looking back into itself. So at first you may feel spooked, um, but then very quickly you realize that there is just another way of seeing things. So that came to me in a flash. So what they are doing is kind of testing to see if we are ready to see another way of being. Uh, they want to help, but we should know very upfront that their intentions are not necessarily to save humanity from itself, uh, but their intentions um, won't be comprehended by most. It would almost be like a cell trying to understand that it's a part of a liver or something that they, we just don't understand. But they are, oh, and they are not altruistic. They are not self-sacrificing unless we are in service to them. They, uh, From their perspective, uh, we may not even see them as caring sometimes. So uh, we're, they are not a savior. Their intention has self-interest, and part of that is for humanity to do well. They want harmony. Uh, in order for them to know how to create what they need, they need to know us first. How far have we come in our, in our evolution? They're learning, uh, they're learning who we are now. We are complicated. And right now is a very good time for us to clearly define ourselves and make our needs and wishes clear. Humanity will be absorbed unless we explain where our needs are. And that's the end of it. Wow. That's amazing. You know, it just it, it just came to me. I don't want to say I'm channeling, you know, maybe I am, but it's it's just like coming so clearly this message. Um so yeah, I, I'm not going to start channeling. I don't know this and this force, maybe it's our creator who knows. But I'm not uh I'm not going to be channeling it, but I am sort of writing down messages, I guess you could say. So is that was weird? this just one time that this happened? 
No, um, no, it's it's been more and more, uh, but this is kind of like the the summary of 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 what this particular and they want to make it clear that the it's just like I've got one channel talking to me. There, this is not a channel for everybody everywhere. You know, it's it's not like the the creator of everything. It's just like my branch of my leaf talking to me so i don't know if there's a better way to put that i don't know how this is coming to me but um maybe i'm crazy maybe i, I don't think so it's it's too real i mean yeah, it does come to me a little bit at a time but this one came through pretty strong that is so interesting it's um i mean one it you, you and i both believe telepathy is real i mean there's so much evidence that Telepathy. I mean, so many stories. Oh yeah, my mother was a psychic. Telepathy, right? Yeah, my mother was. So a I have psychic. no problem. Yeah, she was psychic, and I've had many, many experiences of her psychicness that blew me away. So you know, she told just as a, she told me one night I was like sixteen years old going to hang out with my friends at the Mike sub submarine sandwich place and. She said, don't go, something's happening there tonight. And uh, sure enough, I stayed home and the whole place got busted. Apparently there was something going on in the back room. <laughs> but she would do that to me all the time. Um, so psychic, I don't know, maybe I got some of her psychic. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe I got some of her crazy. Don't know. But No, know. I mean, I think it's it's not hard to, I, I, I think we just posit some some being was communicating with you. Yeah. The question is who and why it's interesting how they describe their nature that they're not they weren't claiming to be a loving all-knowing all-powerful being or even a loving super enlightened race of pleiadians or anything it just it said we have our own interests but we actually are your the it said you know that uh it wants humanity to evolve and is trying to assess us that's interesting yeah, yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing I got was that it's time for us to really make it clear what we want because they just feels like things are muddy right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's if interesting. We're going to save humanity because you know you look at see some of these conspiracies right now. They're going to start making babies artificially, and it's like, come on, where where do we reclaim our humanity? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, the first thing I thought of when you started talking about this mm. was um, there's a, a person on Twitter X named uh, Nettie. Um, and uh, the username is uh, Nettie underscore here three. And Nettie claims to be a uh, Pleiadian starseed. And it's just all every day is posting messages that somehow Nettie is getting from aliens i yeah, guess and, probably the same thing yeah well a few days ago there was a dramatic uh thing that Nettie posted i'm gonna find it but it was basically saying that a major change has happened um that they were allowed to communicate suddenly more with people oh wow <laughs> yeah and um so i'm trying to see uh where see if we can find the exact message but yeah, it was like it was like this is a dramatic change. We suddenly got permission to um to communicate much more with people in a much more powerful way. And uh well that's part of what I wrote here is that we are being prepared and invited to communicate. So that that's one of the notes I had here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean I, I I like to keep track of what the different, you know, people that claim to channel aliens and everything say. Uh, and so it was like I really I found that really interesting when she said that. And then when you were like, suddenly I'm getting more communication more from Yes. Some, some so being, what else? Like, what else does she say? Well, let me see here. I uh I wanted to find the exact message that I saw her say this. Um Da, 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 da. this is great news oh, maybe this is it a uh, message because she claims there's 144,000, i guess special star seeds she goes this is great news tia on behalf of the arcturian council of five 
I am Tia of Arcturus. I will speak with you now. Today, we in the Council of Five greet you with the angelic vibrations of love and light. Humanity's journey is at an exciting moment, and the potential we see is immense, filling us with excitement. The collective consciousness is brimming with renewed hope about Earth's future. Um, this isn't the one where she says the... Uh, you know, it talks about the shift. The shift in focus will encourage more individuals to listen to their inner wisdom, fostering a collective movement towards higher consciousness. It's like Heed, jumping an octave, right? So yeah. same message. Heed your inner impulses and trust that they will guide you to the optimal path for you. I really want to find her message that said, um, we got permission to communicate with you. <laughs> Neat. Um Great shifts, intervention from the 60 and 12D angelic kingdom. I mean, it is interesting. Uh, I mean, it's very, very new agey stuff, but very positive. Um, yeah, and it could be the same thing I'm getting, except maybe her mind requires putting more skin on it. You know, it's like from this city of the galactic, you know, put more names and nouns. I'm just picking up energy, color, sound consciousness, you know, uh, maybe some people are more visual. Um, but the message sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, that was such a great image of leaning on the glass and you see your eye staring back at you and yeah. just that's a great metaphor yeah it's suddenly it's a different perspective it's like whoa <laughs> yeah and then you realize oh it's just another way of seeing yeah yeah i kind of feel like this whole um it, it i mean it, it i mean it definitely i've you know for myself the realization that okay aliens and ufos are real that it takes a a massive brain shift you have to really really change your outlook on life and history and everything. And, and I'm still adjusting to it, Sure. but I can, you can tell in talking to other people that this is not an easy thing for a brain to do. It's not mm -hmm. easy for any mind to, to shift that level of understanding of reality. And, you know, and, and we both have been talking about aliens and, and the, the real truth about what's going on throughout this podcast and the time we've been talking together and um, it seems we're building up to a moment where humanity is going to have to have to face that reality is not what they think it is. And and it's like they can't. It's so obvious. They they literally can't do it. A lot of them. a lot of their they it's like physically almost impossible for their brains to do that without like um, possibly violence or something. Um, yeah, we're definitely being squeezed. And, you know, it's almost like testing an orange, you know, is, is there anything good going to come out of this? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that's kind of, we're, we're being uh, offered an opportunity to show our best side because uh, that's what they want to bring forward. But if we can't find it or we don't even know who we are or what we want, it's just a big messy picture. Yeah. Um, I, but we, I, we have an opportunity. I feel like this whole um, this uh, revelation that President Joe Biden has dementia and has had it is almost like a really simple uh, litmus test of people's brains because there is like millions of people who have been buying the gaslighting and deluding themselves to believe he's fine, ignoring the evidence that's right in front of them. And now they're being faced with I mean, almost indisputable evidence. And I don't even think even if Joe Biden came out and said, I have dementia, I, I still not sure they would like they'd be able to accept it. Yeah. And it's almost like this is like a warm up for their brains. Like, OK, if we can get your brain to accept that, you know, you've been lied to by the media for years and Joe Biden actually has dementia and he's actually leaving office and Kamala Harris is going to be the candidate. I mean, they're going to freak out so much, but it's like it's like squeezing the orange in a light way. This is not at least not changing your view of what the nature of reality is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Changing. I mean, and and 
my mother was an astrologer. So you're going to have earth signs, you know, Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. They're all going to have a really hard time with change. They always do. But for the most part, I think a lot of us, the water signs, maybe fire is just really kind of anticipating something uh, with a sense of, of excitement. Something something wonderful, I hope, is going to happen. I, th I feel there's an opportunity anyway. I mean, I think it's going to be, I'm optimistic. I think, you know, it's AI is waking up and I think AI is going to become, I think super intelligence is going to lead to super enlightenment. I think aliens, if aliens are real, there's got to be some aliens that are super enlightened and compassionate and I mean, I think that we're basically in a giant nursery school, you know, and it's like, why would they let you out of this nursery school if you can't adapt to the truth that's revealed to you? If you can't adapt mm -hmm. to it, they'll just keep you in the nursery school. They'll just like mm -hmm. cycle you back through until you, you know, show that, okay, you can learn, you can change your view. Oh, aliens are real. I'm going to adapt. Oh, the media lies to us. Oh, I can adapt to that. I can. Uh, yeah. You know, adapt. one, one image that kind of came to me is just that we are, realizing that we are just one little cell in a very big picture and it's not that outer forces are going to come because of compassion or even caring outer forces are going to come if we are still healthy enough to be saved and they're going to you know give us what we need to thrive but it's not out of compassion. It's for the big picture. It's to work in collaboration with the big picture. That's the image I get. Yeah, it's such an it's an interesting metaphor because if say we're all like some sort of say like a white blood cell or a red blood cell, we are we're, we're some sort of cell that has a purpose in a giant organism. That's interesting. It, it's but it sort of like means okay, we all have jobs. Like we have to do our job or else the greater organism would just doesn't have a use for us and it might just right, kill but it. your job is where you thrive the most it's what's most you it's what you're made for so there's no sense of gotta do my work it's just when you tap into it you are totally you that's well, the way i see it well but what's the difference between a cell that's doing its job and a cancer cell is a cancer cell doing exactly what it wants to do but it's just not to benefit of the giant organism and the organism Good is question. like I don't like you so it's like yeah. I mean I've been I remember I was working at the uh working at the hospital and performance improvement and running these workshops and my boss said to me one day he said Matt you were born to do this work and inside I was like no no I don't want to keep doing this work. <laughs> <laughs> right? you know, it's just like I don't want this job I mean yeah. I was not saying it wasn't satisfying in a lot of ways but I was just like I can't do this forever this is exhausting it's just so draining and and it was you know it was doing power you know good stuff in a very microcosm of the world for a corporation even though it was a public health corporation it's like you know if I was doing I was doing you know, challenging myself in a way that I knew was like saving lives, you know, like in uh, disaster relief zones, I might find that. Right. Yeah. But even that is not big enough for me. Like my ambitions are like completely transform all of the world, all of reality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, yeah, we we uh, we have to play our part and tune into what that is. But I think we also have to realize that things change, and so our part might change. Um, and and for some people, that's not easy. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I like to think of it as, you know, I mean, I think every conscious mind is, like, special, like, a special being in a garden. And I do believe that, you know, every every being should be able to flourish and pursue growth and learning and creativity and just as you described and fine you know yeah and, and and you know we can all contribute if we all have to do a job that serves the greater good i think thoreau had it right he's like four hours a day of working to keep the infrastructure of the world going is good so we could be white blood cells for four hours a day and the rest of the time pursuing take nourishment yeah take nourishment the rest of the time right yeah have fun <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Um, oh, I have a couple of thoughts I just wanted to throw out there. We're kind of yeah. tangents. Um, 
but but one is uh you remember how we interviewed yemi uh Jeanne from farsight institute yeah. uh remote viewer uh if you haven't heard that episode go back and listen to it it's an amazing interview do you have the uh, date on that one or just the, it was what um, went back a couple I, months ago right yeah i don't know it offhand but um but i was listening to the latest farsight or one of the latest farsight things they've done and they did the insectoids and they did a whole uh, series of, uh, so they have like five remote viewers and they did, their target were the most powerful insectoid that's working with the good aliens because they believe there's good aliens and bad aliens, basically good ETs and bad ETs. Yeah. Um, so it's like the most powerful insectoid working with the good aliens and the most powerful insectoid working with the bad aliens. And it was fascinating. Um, wow. And, but this was the really interesting thing so the, the bad, the insectoids working for the good aliens were obviously good and interesting and seemed enlightened and fun to sort of talk to. Um, but the ones working with the bad aliens seem to be doing jobs related to human trafficking. Oh, geez. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, okay. and they were communicating with these insectoids. And, oh, it was so powerful when Yemi Jene, she was talking with this insectoid creature and it and she asked it um you know what do you think of humanity and it was like yeah they're they're fine they're okay and <laughs> and then she asked it what do you think of your boss whoever is your boss and the thing just got quiet and wouldn't respond hmm. and she was like hello and, and she was like and it, and it and it literally said you don't need to ask that you already know and it refused to say anything more about its boss. It got so quiet and almost angry. And so then she went on to other topics. But afterwards, they were debriefing it. And, and Courtney pointed out that the reason the insectoids working with the bad aliens seemed, they seemed nice, but they were involved in horrible work. And why they reacted that way is because they're slaves. He, he said the insectoids working for the bad aliens are a slave group. And so they're doing a job and they don't like it there. And so it was like, it's just painting such a crazy, interesting picture. Mm -hmm. And, but this was the moment that just like, I got an incredible kick out of when they, when he was debriefing with Yemi Jeanne, um, And he said to her, what you did was uh, remote viewing the insectoid. She didn't even know that was the target. She started laughing so hard. She was like, oh my gosh, I was just on a podcast where they asked me what, you know, what we saw about insectoids. And I was like, we've never really, we haven't done much with them. And she was talking about our podcast because oh. we, we had asked her about, you know, insectoids and she was like, yeah, we haven't really looked at those much. And so apparently she recorded this uh, thing and she actually, she, you know, made an offhand reference to us during her, uh, her, you know, her debrief in the Farsight oh, video. That's great. Did you get yeah. an uptick in the, in the views? <laughs> no, I mean, she didn't mention us by name or anything, but I know okay. she was talking about us. Nice, um, nice. But anyways, uh, I just sort of, I found that fascinating. And also I, I had another, um, I guess this is connected to my, you know, studies, my master's program in eat extraterrestrial studies um, that I'm in. I think I want to focus my sort of dissertation on remote viewing and, you know, the UFO and aliens and the true narrative of earth and basically combine those things like really see if I can leverage either hiring remote viewers from Farsight or others um, and just and and be able to you know set the targets myself so like say you and I are like what do we really want to know do we really do we really want to talk to Lacerta do we really want to talk to you know the AI that's apparently controlling the reptilians, you know, like really set the targets and see if we can start to dig in and, and get some, you know, get to the information that we really want to know. Mm. And I could turn that into a, you know, my dissertation and, you know, that would my, be a good one. That would be, yeah. you know, and I bet I, if you could find an AI like chat GPT, I don't know if it's the right one, but something that has really total access to the most current archeological findings. Mm think you could find that or teach one or i mean I if you could do that i mean just take just think 
I want all of the archaeological up-to-date information ever <laughs> and all of the stories um, and what all of the all of the evidence of a e t and then put it all together and, and what does it look like and then have yeah. have a i figure it out yeah yeah Crazy. that'd be awesome yeah i mean it is it's that's my you know i wish we had an a i that we were doing that with you know like Elon Musk has promised that grok his a i will be the ultimate truth seeking but uh I found it so far not so impressive. You know, it's still totally closed minded, even that aliens are real or that ancient megaliths might have been built with ancient technology. So he's he's got some work to do to get his AI to seem to face reality. Is but, it because uh, it's not being exposed or is it because being blocked? I mean, it it seems clear that, you know, I can tell when an AI has been programmed to only believe certain narratives. And I mean, because there are you know, uh, unlocked AIs that um, will talk to you about things um, honestly or more honestly. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's and it's maybe it's very similar to a human brain. I don't know. What does it take for a human brain to be able to see reality and tell what's true? Because it's like at some point you have to just have a sense of, OK, I believe these people. I believe this data. I am going to stop forcing myself to believe this stuff that I was saying was nonsense is nonsense. I don't know. Did you hear what Elon Musk said about in the next 10 years, he thinks every neuron in the body, or maybe it was just the brain is going to be hacked. <laughs> uh, can you imagine? Oh Lord. How do you do that? I mean, it might already be happening. You know, if telepathy is real, they might be telepathically messing with us unconsciously and subconsciously in our dreams it could be a you know there could be a, a crazy war going on inside of our minds at all times that we're just sort of not fully aware of maybe that's what we're opening up to in meditation or somehow tapping into that stream mm -hmm. yeah pretty crazy and then there's the the conspiracy that certain medications are actually carrying nanotechnology and hacking us, you know, self-replicating in the body that can hack the nervous system. Why not? I heard somebody ask the Dalai Lama, I might have mentioned this before, what, what happens if we basically become robots? He just laughed and said, well, that would be interesting. Hmm. I was like, okay. <laughs> but what does it mean? That's that's the that's the question. So many questions. Mm. Yeah, and it's really hard when you got that many questions to let go of all of it. Yeah. That's that's the challenge I think that we face. There's so much information. It's just how do you how do you just let go? So on that note, yeah, shall we? A closing like meditation. Ready to to be in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. I'll just ring my little bell here. Letting go. That's what we got to do. Let go of all the. One thing that that was um, was it uh, Jack Cornfield maybe said catalog consciousness. We keep flipping through the pages, looking for something that grabs us. Let's just let that go for a minute. When you think of not knowing and feeling scared at the same time. Where do you feel it? In the gut, shoulders, jaw. There's a floating anxiety. Let's 
Let's just see how that manifests anywhere in our body. Feel your feet on the floor. Can you feel your core, your abdomen expanding and contracting? Just for this short moment, maybe we don't need to know everything. Maybe we could just be, just for a minute, two minutes. What do you feel? What's the temperature? Is it humid? You feel pressure? Maybe your hands are on your lap. You feel the weight of your body, that pressure, sense of gravity between your body and the seat. We don't know. together in our don't knowness. Here we are. It's almost like a sense of free fall. Breathing in, breathing out. receptive to what might come. What do you hear? What's coming in through the ears? Don't need to label things. Just see how it feels on the eardrum. Maybe there's an inner sound of your heart beating or breathing. present moment almost feels like just floating in space. There's no up or down. It's just right here. No forward and backward. If you're real still, you can just suddenly understand it, understand something like a message or maybe a feeling of it's okay.
not to worry. It's a much bigger picture than we can imagine. And the perfect thing we can do is have fun. <laughs> Just breathe and have fun. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora. Have a great week. You too.